her. And when when Mandy found her crying, then Mandy could join with her. And and the thing that she said to her was um, something to the effect that the thing that I would want to teach you is to follow your heart. And so the only way I can teach you how to do that is for me to follow my heart. I thought, how wonderful. Now that's a college education. And it's very, it just doesn't fit in a lot of times. I remember even little Matthew one time for coming up, Mom, do I have to go to college, or can I just study the Course in Miracles? I mean, that's a different, uh, certainly a different twist or angle. It's the whole theme of, of that there's something deeper that is maybe doesn't fit into the structure of the way the world and society is. Con Thing, things that are way beyond my control or thinking that I could even think this up, things start, you know, coming. Mm -hmm. Um, this idea of planning the future, when it comes in, it is very rattling for me right now because in terms of a career, here I am, I've just finished this degree and what am I going to do with it, you know? And where is it even going to make any sense? And then the idea that I come this far with school and for some reason I was supposed to do this, I have no idea, and Elizabeth maybe needs that, but it's back to, you know, I find myself sort of falling back into the trap of the world, that everybody thinks that this is necessary. But again, even get that out, what Krista just said is, is all right, if it is necessary, it will be done, and, and you know, however it is to be taken care of, it will be taken care of with little pain if you're in the right mind. I think that's what you're, you're saying. And I, it's that trust. So again, I have to come back to that sense of Christ strength instead of ego weakness, because ego weakness can really make me feel very, very vulnerable. Yes. I would think it would be important to remember that it's not up to you. And I hear in what you're saying that you're feeling responsible, mm -hmm. that it is up to you, mm -hmm. but it really isn't. You know, and you can't control it, and that you know, and tr trying to control the uncontrollable is madness, mm -hmm. and it's just fraught with anxiety. Mm -hmm. What's coming to me too is I remember when we were up at uh, Waynesville, there was a gentleman there who had been in drinking. You had brought up the example; he was the one that said, "Now the course is is my um, comforter or whatever instead of the alcohol." But he was also the same gentleman that said. He said, if Jesus lived today, I don't even know if he could get a date. And I mean, he said, I mean, he walks around, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, he's saying, leave everything behind and follow me, and, and he says, he, he wasn't advocating material possessions and everything, he said, I don't know how many guys could go out and get a date with that. And then he went on to say that, he said to his apostles, you know, leave your jobs, don't work. He said, I don't know of anybody that could even get a date in this kind of a sense. And to me, that's... As you're talking, Mary, you know, we'll keep going into the metaphysics, which are the underpinnings for all this, but until the mind can, can loosen up enough to, to, to let in some of these things, it needs symbols. And that's why I would recommend, you know, to go into the fish or the rancho, which, whichever one you choose, and to watch as Jesus goes through his, his training period and, and quest, continues to question things while still working what seems to be in a family, helping take, take care of the children, teach the children, mm -hmm. not abdicating responsibilities. And then as he goes along and even leaves the family, he, does, he seems to really prepare them for leaving. And then when he goes on and leaves the family and he calls the apostles, to, to look at some of the apostles like Thomas, who's married and has kids, and, you know, and Peter, Peter has three kids. Three kids. You know, once again, here's a, it's very similar to the situation that you could say Mary is in. Mm -hmm. Mary's studying A Course in Miracles. Mary's being called by Jesus just as directly as if he had come and knocked on your front door and said, follow me. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's, it's like, and Mary seems to have a family, as did Peter and Thomas and mm -hmm. others. And it's like, how, what he does is he assigns an apostle to, to go, um, it's John, I think, to, to go back and forth between the families. But once again, he's calling him into a, a, 
intensive teaching learning situation where they're really focusing on these high kind of ideas and everything and you know makes no bones about that that's a very important calling and everything and that that they go back for periods of time even to visit their family you know which could get into the idea of didn't Thomas maybe or Peter feel feelings of loss I just was reading that in there in the sense that, that Thomas was such a moody fellow <laughs> it was describing him that when his wife, when he got called to go off and follow the apostles, his wife thought, Hey, <laughs> go, go with my blessing, you know, which is a kind of a different twist because Peter's wife, you know, it wasn't, uh, didn't go into that, it doesn't say that, that, but there can be all these seeming kind of reactions. You know, that's what Rhonda's going through now in the sense it's not so much She's not feeling neighbors coming up and saying things to her and this and that, but, but Tom, who is very starting to talk about what's going on, is, is there's all these interpretations from those that perceive themselves as mothers being very angry at Rhonda. And from the concept of perceiving it through a mother's eyes, so to speak, it's from that perspective, it's like, what? You know, just anger, anger, anger. And another gentleman who Tom had talked to too, just saying, well, she must have a man in Cincinnati. Why would anyone leave so urgently to go down unless they had someone, you know, all these different interpretations. And once again, as with you and Steve, when you can lay them on the table and say, here's what's going on, and hmm, this is interesting, all these different interpretations. Tom's at the point where he understands it's not a man in Cincinnati that she's just going to, or that she's leaving her children, that she's just vicious mother who never has taken care, uh, shown interest in her children, you know, she, he knows that there's something much deeper that she's called to and the conversations continue and there's still the fear and it's physical symptoms and all kinds of ways it's being manifested, but it, it gets back to putting it all into a, a bigger perspective. And that's what the, the Fish Book has helped me greatly to do because I started to feel real disoriented at times with the Course, because it was just like guiding me to I didn't know where. From this perspective, it's like giving me a bigger, bigger swath of how, how things are unfolding. So I can even start to say, well, maybe it could seem to unfold this way. That's a stepping stone to me letting go, like we've been talking about, of not get putting a lot of credence in the future, not even planning at all. Um. This weekend, I was observing my parents, and again, I want to preface by saying observing because I wanted to, what's, I got to find the lesson, I was on profound experience during this lesson. My own, it's the last sentence, or the last words of the lesson. My the own. power of decision is my power own. power of decision is my own. Where is that? Dad, it's an opportunity. He knows I'm in this, and it's, his, it's like the opportunity to, to bait me almost, you know, and I'm like, oh, God, I just want to leave. He was just talking about, we're all inspired. I believe that we're all inspired. And I said, that's true, Dad. And I try to find common ground. And I said, because what happened was, at the time of the separation, and I went according to the Course. I just said according to the Course, which is something that's been real dear to me and helped me to understand these concepts, is the Holy Spirit came in when we separated. It, it was given to us, you know, et cetera. And I went on, and he goes, well, now, that's got to be the biggest joke I've ever heard. That, that's, <laughs> boy, and he got up, and I mean, I mean, this is a very powerful experience for me as I'm going through this, because you have to understand, I've got a father who wrote a book, What is Truth, who's been lecturing and preaching to me all my life, and now that I'm in this, is really very fearful, and, but the power of decision is my own kept coming in, because I kept wanting this lesson to be for him. Dad, listen, Dad, no one can suffer loss unless it's his own decision. No one suffers pain except his choice elects the state for him. That's the, that is the strength I did this lesson. No one can grieve nor fear nor think him sick unless there's an outcome he wants. And no one dies without his own consent. And, and I did this, and, and it kept coming back. The power of decision is my own. This is my own lesson. Mary. <laughs> and no one dies without my own consent and nothing. And I'm going... But the whole time I'm walking, I mean, talking to myself, I'm going, but, but you see, if he would get this lesson, I could come home and we could talk about this. He loves to talk about things. We could talk about, if he could get this lesson, we could discuss this. And then I realized that I wasn't getting this. 
And when I get this, we might be able to discuss it. Control. Observing my mother on Mother's Day. This is what we went through. Calling everybody on the phone to go to church with her. Come, we're going to go to 1130 Mass. Mary's going too. You've got to be here. Now get here at 1115 because we're going to go to Mass. Come on, honey. We've got to go. Okay. Oh, you can get ready. And this is what's going on all morning. And I'm watching the control, my sweet, dear mother, and how much control she has had over this family. Then I realized, Beth, how much control I have had over my family. I, I began to realize how much control I had over Steve, over my house. So when we're letting go of this stuff, it's, you know, it's a lot I've got to let go of and, I, and that's what I'm realizing I didn't think I was that controlling but when this the power decision is my own kept and I wanted emphatically to go read this I even left the book open when I left for my walk so he could read it <laughs> yeah I mean the do you hear too, of, of like in a sense too like the course is a new belief system and that you know like here it is guys you know now if you could just get this but but even the theology of how the separation happened I mean that's course theology it has to be just theology again because, you know, Jesus says that there <laughs> didn't really happen at all. So he's like, he's giving his own little story that the mind can kind of grab onto as something to hold onto for a while. But in the end, there's an experience that will come that that all has to, to fall away, even the course stories and everything. But just to notice, like you're saying, the, the, the whole thing of wanting to get it to, to be right, to control, you know, these are the kind of things we want to go into really deeply. I wanted to just read, just to go and read this one thing that may help us a little bit. In the Manual for Teachers, first edition, page 73, second edition, page 77. This is not a course in philosophical speculation, nor is it concerned with precise terminology. It is concerned only with atonement or the correction of perception. Then he continues on, um, all terms are potentially controversial and those who seek controversy will find it. Yet those who seek clarification will find it as well. They must, however, be willing to overlook controversy, recognizing that it is a defense against the truth in the form of a delaying maneuver. Theological considerations as such are necessarily controversial since they depend on belief and therefore can be accepted or rejected. A universal theology is impossible, but a universal experience is not only possible but necessary. It is this experience toward which the course is directed. Here alone consistency becomes possible because here alone uncertainty ends. I mean, I, I can relate to what you're saying because that was, as I first got into the Course and stuff started coming up, my first inclination was to pontificate. See how, how starred and underlined and reds and everything, you know, that, this is the introduction to the clarification of terms. It's been helpful for me to keep coming back to that because even within meeting people with the Course, if, if you get into the thing of trying to think, well, this is the proper interpretation of the Course, or mm -hmm. this is what he's really teaching, mm -hmm. or, you know, all those kind of things, mm -hmm. it's like, this, these lines keep coming back to me. It's like, oh, I'm just trying to put this into a theological kind of a framework, mm -hmm. and that's not going to ever bring me peace. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, it's pretty direct, but it really is helpful. I mean, that's the section to read. You could read that before every time before you go visit your dad. As we were talking, um, in my defenselessness, my safety lies lesson, the lesson for today. There is a sentence there that I often feel like. Okay, defenses are the costliest of all the prices which the ego would exact. In them lies madness in a form so grim that hope of sanity seems to be an idle dream beyond the possible. That sentence there has been on my mind. It's like... Is this an idle dream that I that really isn't possible for me? You know, mm -hmm. maybe it's possible for you, but it's. Not. But then I have to come back to, I can I can play right into that with that ego weakness, or I can keep the Christ strength, and that's what helped me today. Mm -hmm. Is okay, you know, you can sit there and be this little weak thing that's going to go to all these doctors, or you can be strong and see what you're supposed to learn mm -hmm. from this experience. Yep. You know. 
but, uh, the fences too. It's like if.